Okay, thank you very much. I'm more than happy to let you on the course this year if you want to. Uh, <laughs> I could come back. Yeah. Level four, maybe level four extended? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Um, I right. always had this theory because the head of the film course was called Nick Wright. And so my theory was that he turned me down because he didn't want to be accused of nepotism because we had the same surname. <laughs> that was my theory anyway. That's what I told myself. Okay, I realize this. <laughs> Um, okay, so I hope you've all got questions ready. I may jump in now and again if uh, the questions go a bit awry, but uh, I'd rather it was you that was asking the questions. So please, let's start. Hands up. Joseph. Um, you got <coughs> one sec. I can, I can hear you. I can hear you. Oh, yeah. Other people are watching this. Um, you this work is a very lot. fancy lecture hall, by the way. <laughs> The other one, the old one used to like, because it, I guess it didn't have air conditioning, people would fall asleep in films a lot. <laughs> and I vividly remember, I want to say that I've seen the film Tokyo Story, but in reality, I have not seen all of the film Tokyo Story. <laughs> and neither had the rest of the class, because everybody was asleep by the end of that film. Not because the film was bad, but just because it was like, it's the summer and it's like stuffy and like... So yeah, that's my, uh, I have to watch Tokyo Story properly at some point. Somebody's tutting. Um, okay. Um, okay. Sorry. Um, you, uh, as a writer, you collaborate a lot with your fellow co-writers. What kind of things do you do to foster that collaboration? Um, well, I think it depends. Um, you know, Baby Driver is actually the first film that I wrote solo since my first film that I wrote in the library that I did one draft of. It could have done with a couple more drafts. Um, writing with other people is great, especially if you're doing a comedy. I think like, writing a comedy on your own is a very lonely business. And um, so most of the, the comedy things that I've written have been written with other people. And I think that's, I mean, you can write a comedy on your own, but like, it's so much more fun to bounce off somebody in the room. So I've written, you know, um, three scripts with Simon. And I also, I didn't write on space, but I was the script editor on that. So I was a big part of that. I wrote two films with Joe Cornish, who is a, an alum, it was an alumni of the film and TV course. In fact, I worked with like two alumni because Joe Cornish, uh, I produced his debut feature and uh, Attack the Block and also co-wrote two movies with him. And Chris Dickens, who was also at the, on the film TV course, edited Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz and later went on to win an Oscar. So it's funny that some of the people who were, and they were not here at the same time as me, they were here before me, but I later became like friends and colleagues I mean, writing with other people, it really depends on, you know, I find, I, I just started writing something else that's not a comedy with somebody that I know vaguely, but like, sometimes working with somebody that you don't really know that well can be an amazing experience. Um, I love writing with people and I think it just um, brings different viewpoints to things that you would never have thought of on your own. And it's always a great thing to be in the room when you come up with something together. And, and, and to know that I would never have thought of that in a million years on my own, you know? So it's really good. If you can find somebody that you really vibe with, or even somebody that you don't know that well, but you, you have a kind of creative spark, it can be amazing, you know? Okay. Hey, um, would you ever consider coming back to kind of TV? And if so, what kind of show would you write or direct? I don't know. I mean, it's come up a lot because obviously, like, TV is, you know, such a sort of hugely expanding... I mean, it's always been big, but I think there's not the same sort of stigma about TV that there used to be. Um, so, but I think it's like based on what the story is. It isn't something where I've sort of sat down and said, I must do another TV show, but it, it's more just based on what the story would be. So sometimes um, things come along. I think it would be something that I would like want to try and write it myself, or at least co-write it with somebody. So I think that's one of the things that, like, you know, I've been offered some TV stuff that's really good, but you sometimes read it and think, oh, this is great. I can't wait to watch it. I'm not sure if I want to spend like two years making it. But I think the great thing was when we used to be spaced on Channel Four, it was so like our show, and we were so lucky. I, I mean, I, re I realized at the time. I didn't really realize it at the time, but I realize it now how lucky we were to kind of be left alone making that show. And it's partly because it wasn't that big budget. They just let us kind of get on with it. I don't know if that would happen now, you know. Um, so I, I feel like sort of like so fortunate 
um, that we got to make that uh, show that when we did. But I think if I went back to TV, it would be something, something that I create or create with somebody. Yeah. Hi there. Um, as far as I'm aware, you're working on anim animation right now. Sort of. I was. I wrote some. I wrote something. It's like maybe, maybe not happening because there was a whole regime change at that studio. So I wrote something with, with David Walliams, in fact, actually, um, for DreamWorks. But like. It, in that interim, I wrote it before Baby Driver, in that interim, like the DreamWorks has completely changed. This is boring, but so it might not be happening. <laughs> but I would like to do an animation at some point. It is something that I, uh, one of the things I did when I was like starting out is I used to make little animation shorts. And my brother, who sort of still works in that field in some respects, um, I love the form. I enjoyed writing this movie. Maybe something else will come along. Maybe something else will happen with that one. But it could happen. But I, there's a couple of things in that vein that I've been working on. And I mean, what's interesting is that because I, uh, both me and my brother draw, and both our parents were like art teachers. And it is interesting that the way that I make the live-action movies is not a million miles away from how people make animation movies. And so for something like Baby Driver, or in fact all of them, every single scene is storyboarded like every single scene, including the dialogue scenes. Most films, like, they, they, they might do the action scenes. But I storyboard absolutely everything. And, um, you know, with Baby Driver, because we had all the music cleared before we started shooting, we knew what the songs were. Before we started shooting the movie, we had edited together all of the storyboards to the music the day before. So in the week before filming, we had this, like, 90-minute long animatic of all the storyboards and some of it was like animation. If you see on the extras that are on, like, um, I still have Blu-rays, right? Um, uh, <laughs> but the, like the extras, uh, we put some of those animatics on. And in fact, I worked with animators on those. The two of the people who did storyboards are people who had worked at Disney and DreamWorks and Pixar. Um, so it's a weird thing where it's like the animation process where you draw something out in its entirety is not a million miles away from the way that I work doing live action. I was going to ask you what is the difference between animation and film and like how do they, how can you uh, use your experience from film in animation but you kind of answered that, thank you. <laughs> you were way ahead of me. Yeah. <laughs> you talked a bit about, um, and we talked earlier on about sweet. Um, <laughs> Uh, you, your, your films are always heavily influenced by music, I think. Would that be fair? Certainly Baby Driver, obviously, but even the other ones. Is that, is, does music heavily influence you right from the start of the process, or does it, where does it come? Yeah, no, it does. In some cases, it like, inspires me to like, make something. In the case of Baby Driver, it was this, the first song that's in the soundtrack, in fact, the same one on that reel. I think I heard that like probably why were you around the time after I left here, like 94 or something, 95? And I heard that song and I kept imagining a scene to go with the song. So I have a lot of those things where it's sort of, I'm such a big music fan, you know, and um, uh, I remember actually, I was thinking on the way here actually that I used to like, uh, I think I, yeah, we were saying, I think I only saw one gig when I was at Bournemouth. I saw Suede at Paul Arts Centre in 1993. <laughs> First way down, still good. Um, uh, but I did, I, I remember also, like, I was thinking about this because we just drove on the way here and I went to sort of like, because uh, I, uh, I'm sure they all like the same like shitty um, uh, student nights still exist, but that's what I used to mainly because I didn't have any money used to go to other student nights in Bournemouth. And um, I'm not sure, what, what's the name for the place called the, the Cage and the Zoo? What's that now called? Cameos. Cameos, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That's how, that's how I felt about it at the time, and yet I still went every week. <laughs> and also, there used to be a student night at the Boscombe Academy, which I think is now the O2. Does that still exist as a night? <laughs> but I also remember going to the first ever time I went to like an indie club was in like, um, I can't remember where this place was. There was a place called the Hot House, and it was somewhere like near Boscombe or Charminster. 
I'd have to go and drive around to find what it is now. I'm sure it doesn't exist. But I remember it's the first time, all of the other places like the Cajun Desi used to play like Shitty Chart music and stuff. And then I went to this indie club in Bournemouth and it was the first time I'd been to a club that was playing like, oh, the Breeders and the Pixies and this is cool. Um, I also remember that it was in a, a, a bar somewhere like that road that's behind Westover Road that, has all the, that used to have all the bars. I was in a bar there and I heard one of the songs on the Baby Driver soundtrack for the first time. So I remember back in the days before Shazam where you'd have to listen to something and memorize it and then maybe hear it again <laughs> like years later say, ah, that's the song from that bar. <laughs> uh, it was like one of the songs on the Baby Driver soundtrack, Know How by Young MC. I remember vividly hearing that in a, like, a, a, like a Bournemouth bar and like going, what is this? And so it's those weird things where sort of something like lodges with your own mental Shazam, um, like uh, lodges with you for years and years and then you end up like using it in something. Yeah. But like music was always a big part of, um, you know, growing up for me and, um, and, and such a sort of, even if songs don't end up in films, it's like I like writing to music, you know, like talking of Suede, when we wrote The World's End, me and Simon Pegg, we, we just had this endless playlist that was like 300 tracks long of all songs from like 88 to 93. And we just play it like in, on a loop, like sh on shuffle every day. And then as you're writing, then occasionally there'd be something you're thinking, this would be good. This would be a good song, you know. So it is a way that like uh, I get inspired by music. And sometimes that music ends up in the film or sometimes it's just for the, the vibe and the tone. Yeah. Okay.